Hi, I'm the volunteer for group three. Um, and in our group, we talked about what research a candidate would need to learn um, and do before announcing their candidacy. So some of the things that we talked about were total population, where are they running, demographic in that community, what type of race is it, um, history of voting in that area, such as who's voting, how they're voting, how many times they're voting, and um, what's the voter registration rate across different age demographics. Um, they should know about any active interest groups and nonprofit community leaders, uh, maybe outline them in a spreadsheet, any stakeholders. They should look at businesses, schools, churches, um, et cetera, to see what the community needs. They should also be aware of community election deadlines. Um, they should also know historical context of the community and land landscape of pressing issues, um, possibly about recent economic hardship. It would be helpful for them to know what not to make promises for, for things they can't fix overnight. And it would be helpful when trying to see where um, that candidate's resistance would be. Um, and then another thing is it would be important for understanding their win number and what it would take to win their election. Um, let me just pull here. Another thing on our list was considerations with budget and fundraising, such as making sure it's reflective of the community they're running in, um, how it's going to affect their strategy, and then for budget, a statement of people's values and thinking about who has donated in the past for candidates that they similar to them, um, what are their maximums as far as donations and fundraising, um, that they can also, it says like you can fundraise from voters and how much of your money comes from outside of the community. Um, and then the last tidbits of what we talked about was messaging that's relevant to that community, how many candidates are, are in their field, where are they in their campaign process, um, and then a question that came up was, when do you start to do operational research? Um, and then assembling your kitchen cabinet, advisors that help you strategize your campaign and thinking about them as your mentors in the political community. Did I capture everything, group three? Is there anything else anyone from my group would like to add on? No, we're good. No, we that did a great job. Yeah, that was a really comprehensive list. Thank you so much. And and I, I I'm not sure if it was a question, if I heard it correctly, but you you mentioned something about opposition research. Um, so yes, you want to start right away, especially if your opponent is an incumbent, even easier. That's even easier. Like you because his or her track record will be up in public, like his or her voting records, everything will be up on the city's website or or a real state's website, whichever, depending on which state you're running for. So um definitely you want to start as early as possible and keep like just keep digging as you go on um throughout the campaign because more things might come up. But um you definitely could start right away. And then you also briefly mentioned win number. It's so important. I cannot emphasize how important it is to know your win number. That's probably the number that you should memorize like in your head um, because your win number will, will deter, like it will affect how you're going to, how you're going to um, budget your whole campaign. So for instance, if you know that your win number is 10,000 people, 10,000 voters, that means that you need to get 10,000 voters to vote for you. And so with that being said, like how many millers do you need? How many, how many, um, how many volunteers or how many doors do you have to knock or how many calls do you have to make? And so you work from that number, from your win number, you work your way down to your operation, your daily operation. So that's like, num that's the one number that you should like memorize um, throughout the campaign. And you should probably have it like written down somewhere on the wall or something and then put it like right there, huge and obvious. Um, so absolutely. Thank you so much. Do we have a volunteer for group four? Can I ask a question before we go to group four? I'm yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
So how do you find out the win numbers? So <laughs> there's a formula to it. Um, I'm going to try to briefly explain it, but I'll also drop a link in the chat box in a bit. Um, but your win number, it's basically the minimum number of votes you need to secure um, in order to win an election. It's really easy to calculate if you only have two people running for one seat, because if you have two people running for one seat, your win, your win number will be like 50, 50 plus one, so 51 percent. Um, but I like to play on the safe side, so I would add like error margin, so I will make it 50 plus three, so 53 um, percent. But your step one is basically to calculate expected voter turnout using numbers from previous years. So for instance, I ran for city council in 2018, and so, and 2018 is not presidential election year, so I was looking at data, the voter turnout from 2014 and also in 20. Wait, am I doing my math right? Yes, 28. So I ran in 2018, so I look at the voter turnout in 2014 and also 2010. And then I add the numbers together and then divide it by two or three, and that will give me the voter turnout, the expected voter turnout. Um, and then using the voter turnout number, you take that um, times 53%, and that will be your basic win number. I know, I, I'm not good at explaining math, but um, I will, I will. Maybe I didn't drop that, but I was like really bad at math, and I still don't understand third grade math, so everything you said, it really sounded like Okay. So maybe the document will help, but yeah, I, will, um, I will find a, I will find <laughs> Thank a you. graphic that explains that for, and I'll drop that in the chat. <laughs> yes, that that will make it much easier. I'm not a math. I guy. also just want to caution, though. This came up two days ago. The win number could differentiate depending on the race given that some places, a lot of folks are doing rank choice voting. So like Jocelyn's equation actually doesn't totally fulfill that particular race. So there's not one science to figure it out, unfortunately. And that's why that detail, that's why we say in this group that we have to figure out what our win number is because there is a different rate, like each race is so different. And so I know this general, this training is super general and as national as it can get. And so that's just something to think about too. Um, and obviously everyone at NAL and everyone at Ignite is happy to coach you through that process when you get there. Um, but it is, um, there's not one perfect science to it. Yeah, and, and that's actually a really good point. I totally forgot about ranked choice voting. Um, so when you have a, when you have a race that's ranked choice voting, it's, that's a whole different formula to calculate your win number. But I will drop, um, I will leave a comment in the chat box with the basic calculation of the 50 plus one, and then hopefully that will help some of you. Thank you. Um, sounds good, thank you. And we'll go to, I lost track, which group was it? Uh, four. Group four, there we go, thank you. It was group four, John. Do we have a volunteer from group four? Okay. So I'm Naïs, my pronoun is other she, her, I, I'm the volunteer. Anais, are you there? I heard her. And Hello? I didn't. I'm here. Can you hear okay, me? Okay, great. Yep. Okay. So um, we did group four. It was, um, let's take a look. The it was days 31 to 75 developing campaign outreach strategies and the question we worked upon was if you need to recruit volunteers, where would you recruit them? And um, we brainstormed. Um, so someone said community stakeholders, so groups in your community, um, reaching out to them. Um, also social media um, being active on social media have someone designated to um, help you with posting events that you're putting on or events will you'll be in person if you're a candidate um also um i know amina talked about reach which type of voter would you reach out and um we suggested high propensity voters first and then low propensity voters 
And um, someone also suggested um, looking at voter registration data to reach out to other types of voters. Um, and also Amina brought up a good point, which um, I hadn't heard of before, but build your campaign backwards. So um, basically from election day on backwards and be strategic um, on whatever type of outreach you use so you can me measure each step of the success that you have. Awesome, thank you Anais. And then also, you, you, I know you briefly talk about high propensity voters, but also it's really important to know who is your base. Um, like, and that, that could vary from individuals to individuals and from race to race. So there's that. But, um, and then also with talking, speaking of outreach strategies, like, you know, with COVID-19, with this pandemic, with everything that's happening, um, it's also important to know that sometimes you might have to make adjustment and change your strategy. So just be flexible. Having a plan in place is really important, but also it's important to be flexible. Um, thank you so much, Anais. And we'll go to group five. That was my group, so. Yes, so I'm the volunteer. Uh, my name is Jasmine. So for ours, it was who do we go to for endorsements? So what we put down is advocacy groups, teacher unions, labor unions, other politicians, community leaders, city council members, local party groups, statewide party groups, um, some of them being SEIU, ASME, National Domestic Workers Alliance, um, Make the Road, police unions, firefighters. And then we also wrote down women's national organizations like Emily's List, League of Women Voters, Planned Parenthood, and then also the press, so like LA Times, the press uh, enterprise. And then although it's not a formal endorsement, um, low, um, people donating money is also another form of endorsing them. Thank you. And also one of the things that we talked about was that what not to do when asking for endorsement. And do you want to talk about that one? I saw Jasmine. Uh, yes. So we mentioned uh, when asking someone to endorse you not to ask them through text or I mean, if it really has to be over the phone, but if you can try to do it in person. And then it's always important to make sure that you also have it in writing. Um, so it's not like a she said, he said uh, situation. So after you get the endorsement, follow up with an email so you have it in writing. Awesome. Thank you. And group six, show me the money. All about fundraising. Who, who's our volunteer for group six? That's me. Hello. My name is Callie, she, her, hers. Um, and our group talked about fundraising strategies. So the, um, we talked about uh, having fun ways to raise money. So whether that be um, through service-based things, such as card washes or um, other ways. We also talked about the dreaded call time and how to make that the most effective that we can. So having a very clear, concise message as well as um, a relatable message in a way to relate to people you're talking to and having an easy way to donate so they know where to go and it's not too convoluted. We also talked about dinners, uh, having fish fries, um, and just having a way to, people, to make people feel involved and feel like they're a part of your campaign with you. We also talked about um, giving thank yous as, or for, for donations, whether that be gifts or thank you notes, handwritten notes, um, a very kindly worded email with a video attached, anything like that. Uh, we also talked about endorsements, how those can help with fundraising. Talked a little bit about social media and the importance of that, especially now in, in, in this climate where we can't be out in person, but just making sure that the, um, the, the candidate is staying active with the public and then making sure that their links are available. And please donate here if you can, any dollar counts. Uh, but doing like IG Lives or um, IGTV, Facebook Lives, things like that. Uh, we also discussed um, having like a donation letter template. That was more of like a little discussion, discussion we had, but just making it as easy as possible to ask for donations because that's pretty, it's pretty awkward. Um, and if you can make it 
the the system more um, flowy, I guess, then then why not? And then also it was mentioned um, to put like to have little notes that people can put on their fridges or like little reminders that people can have. So, so like every time they look at it, they can donate something. Um, they can keep it with them and potentially give out to other people. Now that those were great ideas. Thank you so much. And I, I also want to like emphasize that, you know, fundraising does not have to be boring. It, it could be fun. Um, you could like, you mentioned about throwing fundraisers. It could be like a birthday fundraiser, or it could be like I did a um, few, what, one month, so last year, in, back in March, um, I did an International Women's Day fundraiser, and I had a pink night, like pink and wine, and people would chip in like $50, and we would get together, and we would paint and drink together for the night. So it doesn't have to be traditional, like, here we are, let's get together, someone gives a speech, and, and everyone donates, and call it a night. It doesn't have to be boring. It could be fun as well, and there's so many ways to make it fun. So thank you so much for that. And let's go to group seven. Oh my goodness, digital campaigning. This is, um, this is definitely a topic that we want to be talking about right now, especially with the pandemic and COVID-19. So who, who's our volunteer for group seven? we not have anyone from group seven? I can go. Okay. Um, we, we hadn't uh, decided before the, the uh, what is it, the, the breakout group had canceled, but let me just open up the page and then we'll be able to delve into it. Let me just get it one second, Google Docs. You prefer that we go to group eight first and then we'll come back to you? I got it. You got it. Okay. So yeah, like um, creating a YouTube channel, maybe with a vlog style, so it feels very personal. Maybe creating the candidates platform to a wider demographic. Spread it, that spread it, that spreads the candidates platform to a wider demographic. Um, going on Instagram Live, Facebook Live, also Instagram TV, which will also be um, monetized later this year. They're in the process of monetizing it. Um, because they're trying to be uh, competitive with Google and, and YouTube, which is Google owned. Also Snapchat series, which are like TV series, but they're shorter and they can also be monetized. Also Instagram boomerangs with a step-by-step -step behind the scenes of what you're doing every day. Also focusing on auth authenticity. It's really important to be authentic. Don't try to be picture perfect. It's really, it won't work. Always film on phone cameras. It's more real instead of trying to do, you know, your your fancy camera that you might have pulled out of storage or something. It's always good to do something very real and raw. Also, Twitter, answering questions that voters have because voters have tons and tons of questions, especially with corona, coronavirus. Also, YouTube Live with a staff member to filter questions because sometimes they're really bad, weird questions. So being able to have someone to filter that. Also, YouTube has a donation widget, so that with the uh, 2,000, 200,000 uh, trees sort of planting situation, they were able to use the donation widget. Also, using Facebook in various forms, not just posts, but also using Facebook Live. Virtual town halls, you can do that also through webinars, events, um, so people feel more connected. You can do Q&As with Instagram Live. Also Zoom fundraisers with local DJs, which is very fun. Local nonprofits as well. You can partner with the ASPCA if you're in New York or something like that. Also themed Zoom parties around intersectional, intersectional feminism or multifaceted issues with poor black and brown communities and what the issues they're facing specifically in coronavirus. You can also do potlucks with food or like food themes like cultural days. Um, also cleaning slash organizing, because that's a huge thing with coronavirus, sort of like Mary Kondo and that whole TV series on Netflix. Um, and then also candidate-led food shows, Cam Cam Kamala? Kamala? Kamala Harris's sort of style. So she would go onto Instagram Live and cook and talk about politics and cooking. So it's very down to earth, very 
home homespun sort of that really genuine authentic feeling also zoom sharing screen sharing self-made infographics and slides so you can make your own um, sort of visualizations to help people understand your platform also for the last idea which was family story time so telling your own family stories around covid and the ups and downs to really bring yourself bring people together and also to make yourself more human to them so you're not this sort of politician that's far away so that's what we had thank you thank you and um one person like one politician who came to mind like as, as you were mentioning like it was as you were going through um all the lists and and everything i was just like aoc aoc does such a good job with using social media to reach out to her constituents and was like it's amazing that in fact she, i think she she was able to use social media to fundraise over a million dollars um, just in one quarter so you know that's definitely something that that um absolutely especially in this you know in this pandemic and with everything that's changing we can definitely see that social media is, is um, becoming more and more important in a campaign so thank you so much and we have last but not least um, we have group eight who was from group eight the last group so i'm going to volunteer for my group just because we had some difficulties but we were discussing the last wrap up of our campaign. So we had to answer the question of what we're going to be doing in terms of outreach, what our strategies are for the last 76 days to the end of our campaign. So we discussed creating, uh, updating our calendar and making adjustments to it for those last few days because we want to reach the people that we've already contacted and the positive IDs. And we also want to reach out to people that were maybe voter, maybe a supporter or needed a little bit of an extra nudge. We wanted to have some events and rallies so that we can get the candidate in front of people and speaking to individuals as well as um, canvassing events and doing some social, some digital things, some digital events, like going on Instagram Live and doing certain challenges to engage our voters uh, to further involve them in our campaign. And for talking to our base, we want to ask those strong supporters that we have to help us fundraise and be volunteers because those are our core supporters. Those are the individuals we knew were going to support our candidate. So we were going to ask our base to either host a house party or go door knocking and create a phone bank for us. And we were going to ask them to create a voter plan and commit to voting cards to help us encourage more voter turnout. We've also asked them if that they couldn't do phone banking or host a house party for us, perhaps they could consider hosting other volunteers and other hosting volunteers in their home or providing rides during the election to give people rides to the polls. Did you all have a chance to talk about absentee voting? We did not. <laughs> and that was my bad. I'm sorry, Group 8. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay. So one of the things that um, that's really important also is to find out more information about absentee voting. So not all states allow absentee voting, and even for states that do allow absentee voting, there might be some restrictions or some some limitations. So first thing you want to do is does your first thing that you want to find out is does your state allow absentee voting, and if yes, when can people start voting by mail? And, and um, third, do they need stamps in order to mail out their ballots? Like in California, we just changed our law. We now no longer require a stamp to mail out our ballot, which is great. Like you could just drop it off outside and it will be picked up right away. Um, but if, but previously, in previous years, it, we did have to pay out of our own pocket and some campaigns would actually pay for our stamps. Like they would give us the stamps because um, well, frankly, not everyone has a stamp um, ready to go. So sometimes campaigns will provide stamps. And then also the other thing that you want to find out is that are you allowed to collect people's ballots? Um, this is something that's fairly new, a fairly new concept. Um, we just we just introduced this in California, 
I think two years ago. Um, so in California, ca candidates and campaigns can now collect other people's ballots for them, um, as long as they're signed and sealed by the voter, him or herself. So um, you wanna find out all those information because it makes a huge difference um, if your state does allow candidates and campaigns or, or really anyone mm -hmm. to collect your ballot. Um, that means that you might want to dedicate a whole team just to do that. So just keep that in mind, find out more about absentee voting in your state. That's really important as well. Any questions for group eight? Awesome, well, thank you all so much for that. Don't leave yet, we, we still have half an hour to go. We have two amazing speakers. Um, right after this, but before we go into um, before we go into that, let's all stand up and if you're able to do so, let's stand up and like just stretch a little bit. If you're wearing pants, if you're not wearing pants, you might not want to do that. But um, just if you're wearing pants, stand up, stretch a little bit. I know it's been a long hour. All right, I'll stay seated. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. You you can still stretch while you're seated. Just you know, different, different type of stretching. <laughs> um, just scratch a little bit here and there. So thank you all. So, okay. Now I feel much better, actually. Okay. So we have Jess and Kalisa joining us. Are you, I'm, I'm assuming they're both here. Um, Again, thank you all for the amazing, amazing presentations. You're all more than ready to be running and leading a campaign. Um, let's give each other a virtual high five. Good job, y'all. And we, yes, I know a few of you have asked, um, will we be sharing this with everyone? Would you have access to the document? Yes and yes. We will be sharing everything with all of you. That's the whole purpose of the training. We're not trying to withhold any information. Um, we will be sharing our, our documents with everyone and you will have access to that. So we will do that after the training today. And so without further ado, we will have Jess and Carissa joining us. So for those, who, those of you who were here yesterday, um, it's, it's basically very similar to what we did yesterday. This is, except this, this is a little bit different in the way that I will not be asking the questions. Instead, you all will be asking them the questions. You can ask Jess and Carissa really anything as long as it's related to campaigning. So instead of having, how many people do we have here? So instead of having 50, 50 of you, um, talk over each other, we will split everyone into two groups. And so basically similar to how we did, how we did it yesterday towards the end, um, we will have Jess in group one and Carissa in group two during the first 10 minutes and then we'll swap them so that you will have, you'll get to spend 10 minutes each with each speaker. And you could literally, again, ask them anything about campaigning. Um, so let's see, do I have, actually do I have Jess and, do I have Jess and Carissa here? Jess, are you here somewhere? I'm here, hi everybody. Oh, awesome, okay. So we have <laughs> Carissa here, okay. And I don't see Jess though. Yeah, I don't think she's joined yet. She's joined, okay. Well, let's see. Um, Esmeen, you ready to, are you ready to send them into two groups? I can start sending people over with Carissa. And I can take the first group. Okay, so I'll put you in uh, with Carissa yeah. Jocelyn. So we have like one minute to wrap up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And, and I'll, have, I'll have both Carissa and Jess share just spend one minute to share one piece of advice to wrap things up because um, I know they were interrupted quite a few times so I want to give them the chance to do that okay do we have everyone back here awesome well um should we start with you Jess do you want to just send actually we have people still coming back still coming back uh, okay 
I think that's it. Okay, so Jess, do you want to um, just spend one minute? I know we're we're a little bit late. We're running late, but just one minute, one piece of one piece of advice to wrap things up. And go ahead, I'll let you take over, Jess. Yeah, sure. Um, I would say uh, don't be in a rush on your career. Um, I really have benefited from learning from people who were better at this than I was, who've been at it longer than I was. Um, and I think that especially when I was in my 20s, I like wanted to hurry up and get in charge. And honestly, I wish someone had told me that leadership like is a lot of like HR and budgeting and fundraising and not like awesome program work. Like <laughs> if you love program work, like stay in program work. Um, and if you want to be a leader one day, like learn how to do HR and budgeting and fundraising. Thank you so much, Jess. Great advice. And Carissa, do you want to spend just one minute to give one piece of, of advice um, to wrap things up for us? Okay, I'm going to need it now. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jess. <laughs> um, I think my, um, my one piece of advice, I think, and I always use this as my motto, I think that if you go into a room and no one else there looks like you, then you're in the right room and you should also be asking the hard questions for that room to change. And so that to me is um, my biggest um, advice um, as I um, work, um, you know, in this field and in politics is that, you know, never be, I think, never be afraid to kind of um, own your truth and to also um, expect, and um, I'm going to use the word demand better, um, you know, these spaces have to continue to mold and be refined to look like you, to look like me, to look like our grandmothers, to look like our aunts, to look like our brothers, to look like our sisters. And so I think that that um, has always been my motto. And I've always used that also. Um, honestly, I approach a lot of these things with grace. I say that to say that a lot of what I do, I think, is to educate that, you know, we can be the policy experts, you know, we can be the strategic thinkers, we can be the consultants, like, I, you know, I'm willing to show you. Um, and so that's kind of my biggest um, advice um, in leadership is to always make sure that there's representation that looks, um, that looks like America and beyond. Thank you all. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Carissa. That was phenomenal. I That was amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us and for staying for all four days until right now, the very last minute. So thank you all so much. And yes, we will follow up with everyone. We will send you all the materials, um, Google Doc, and what else? And also, I Jess, I promised them that I will send them a list of digital boot camps. So I will get that from you and send it to them as well. So with that being said, thank you all so much. And Sarah, do do we have we sent out the um, evaluation form? I think Esme is going to send that out. I just want to thank our trainers, Jocelyn and Kiana, for leading us this week. Um, it has been phenomenal each day. Our speakers have obviously been super phenomenal, really highlighted all the different campaign experience there is. Um, and I just wanna thank our partners at New American Leaders for this amazing opportunity to both do this on the ground and online the past couple months. I think that this has just been such a phenomenal um, piece that really elevates all of our work. And I'm so excited that the boss ladies of the United States really all look like us. Um, and I can't wait to hear the wins of the campaigns um, very, very soon. Thank you all so much. Thank we are you. all boss ladies. So thank you. And 